Our thanks to Zach Zawande, the last of our very talented finalists, and a sensational start to this year's Thassingham Festival. The Falconer Bursary Award has helped establish many of today's leading classical artists. Members of the festival have voted online for the musician they felt was most deserving, and the results, as they say, are now in. And the winner is... Jacob Wheeler. Congratulations, Jacob. Thank you. And you'll be able to enjoy his exceptional playing after the interval. In the meantime, why not enjoy a delicious Rafferty's gin cocktail outside on the lawn? <laughs> You should have won. That's what everyone's saying. I didn't, did I, Dad? Fancy a snifter, my love. I'm not lining my pockets, and neither are you. I play so much better with a drop tick. No, Vernon, you just think you do. Cheer up, darling. It's the festival. See you in there. Yeah. Hey. How would you do you proud, sis? Congratulations. <laughs> well done, Jacob. Give me one second. Thank you. And no hard feelings, mate. It's cool. Yeah. Best man won. Dad. Not now, Dan. Some of you perhaps know, at the festival this year, we will be performing my long-awaited Ninth Symphony. And tonight, as a prelude, our award winner, Jacob Wheeler, will lead the orchestra in the rather fiery last movement of my Eighth Symphony. So, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Wheeler. <laughs> Jacob Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen.
broomstick trick only works in old films. Can I open the wine then? Look, I'm only two chapters in and I've already got writer's block. According to the Mystery Writer's Blog, putting myself through the same emotional experience as my characters can inspire a breakthrough. Please? Okay. Okay. So, we're at the convent. The novice nun has just uncovered the Reverend Mother's secret, so she tries to drag her down the stairs to the crypt. So I'm a nun then? No, that's her secret. She's a man masquerading as a nun. Okay? Now grab me. I did knock. Hi, Jamie. We were just doing a bit of role play. Not that kind of role play. For the first murder scene in my novel. Murder? I thought you were writing a historical romance. Romance is dead, apparently. Hello, stranger. You miss me, then? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Good to see you back, Cap. Good to be back. It's the um, opening night of the Thassinger Music Festival, run by Michael Faulkner. He's a pretty big deal, both as a conductor and a composer. He owns the estate, and his ensemble play here every summer. Who's the victim? Jacob Wheeler, a violinist. How did he die? Death by ligature strangulation. And the ligature in question looks suspiciously like a violin string. Time of death? From the bruising, I'd say an hour ago. Looks like the perpetrator surprised him from behind. Anything else? He has some sheet music forced down his throat. Any idea what it is? Not yet. I'll know more tomorrow. Who found the body? Candice Rafferty. She's a member of the orchestra. Michael Faulkner's niece. I wasn't in the first part of the programme. So I went outside to get some air. What was your relationship with Jacob? We were in the orchestra together. Friends. My daughter's been through a lot, Inspector. Surely you can do this tomorrow. She has been fingerprinted for elimination, sir. That's fine, Mr Rafferty. We'll be in touch. Was anyone else at the scene? Not that we know of. Her sister Natalie was also in the orchestra. Her boyfriend's taken her home. She lives in the next village, Finchmere. Sir, I thought you should know. There's no sign of Jacob Wheeler's violin. Well, thanks, Cam. Get uniform onto it. Will do. Michael, the phone lines have been jammed with people wanting refunds. No need to panic. How can you be so calm? The entire festival might have to be cancelled. Mr Faulkner. DCI Barnaby, DS Winter. Michael Faulkner. This is my sister Janie. We run the festival together. Any news, Inspector? It appears that Jacob Wheeler's violin is missing. The Stradivarius? So, quite valuable. Yes, very. It was on loan from a Dutch conservatoire. Jacob was very careful. He never let it out of his sight. Anything distinctive about it? Well, it's a Stradivarius. It had a specific pattern. And its colour. It's an exquisite red. Yes, it's red. So that's why he was killed? For the violin? It's a possibility, yes. Miss Wheeler, can you think why anyone might want your brother dead? Any feuds? Disputes of any kind? No. Nothing. What about his personal life? Any significant relationships? He was completely dedicated to music. He didn't have time for anything else. And you shared this house together? It's their family home. Have your parents been informed? They died uh, five years ago in a car crash. I'm sorry. Can this really not wait? Uh, we'd just like to take a look at Jacob's room. Looks like Jacob liked to party. Sir. Seems Jacob Wheeler wasn't quite the loner he led his sister to believe. 
How well did you know Jake, Mr. Faulkner? Well, I'd say we were friends. We met each other a few times when we were younger. We found evidence of lipstick in his room. Do you know if he had a girlfriend? Jacob was very attractive to women. Let's just say he took full advantage. And Miss Wheeler didn't seem to think so. Well, I don't think she wanted to know. Anyone who didn't like him? Bernard de Hartog and him had a bit of a history. They didn't get on. Who's he? A viola player with the ensemble. Where might we find him? <laughs> at the Thassingham Arms, propping up the bar. Come on, Vernon, that's enough. Just steadying the nerves. Don't shake him like a leaf. It's called the DTs. Mr. De Harthog. You see, I Barnaby, DS Winter. I believe you knew Jacob Wheeler. We played in the same orchestra together. That's about it, as far as it went. We were told that you didn't get on. We had the odd spat. Nothing serious. Vernon's a big softie at heart. People take advantage. And you are? Audrey Glenhill. I'm the landlady. Vernon lives with me when he's not on tour. Audrey and I are old friends. She more or less ran the festival when she and I first met. The good old days, when Fassingham was still a real community event, and the ticket prices were low. Free? If you didn't have the cash? Yeah, now they're not. No. This year, Michael upped all the ticket prices and replaced all the bars I'd run for years with his sister's trendy new gin business. Now, it's just corporate entertainment for the Dickie Bow Brigade. It's actually the one day I feel most sorry for. Oh, that boy is a musical genius. He absolutely deserved to win that award. The Faulkner Bursary Award. Well, let's just put it this way. Jacob Wheeler was not exactly the people's choice. Jacob was Michael's favourite. He didn't bother to hide it. Dad! It's the truth. He didn't even need that money. But Zach does. He's got a place at a top music college. Without that bursary, it's out of the question. He got more votes than I did. End of. <laughs> I would love to believe that. You think the vote was fixed? I wouldn't put it past him. Every festival member I know voted for Zach. It's not right. Not a lot of love for the Faulkners. Check out the online voting, see if it could be open to abuse. Yes, sir. And find out whether the award automatically passes to the candidate with the next highest vote. Will do. Dad, just let it go. I'll get a job, start earning. No. You'll keep practising. This matters more to you than it does to me. I'm not letting you waste your talent. I'll find the money somehow. How? Let me worry about that. Yes, of course I understand. And I'll transfer the money tomorrow. Devil. Devil, I defy thee.
I didn't notice anything unusual until I came in here and saw that the door was open and the window had been broken. And was anyone else in at the time? I was upstairs having a shower, but I didn't hear anything. So nothing's been taken? Not that we're aware of. How well did you know Jacob Wheeler, Mrs Rafferty? Not very. You didn't talk to him yesterday? See anything unusual? No. Why? You think this could be connected? Not many opportunist thieves ignore cash and laptops. That's what Hamish said. Where could we find your husband? He's in the botanical garden, behind the distillery. You'll see the greenhouse. Thank you. We're all rather unsettled, as you can imagine. But you didn't see or hear anything? Well, none of us did. Interesting plants. Yeah, well, we grow our own botanicals for the infusions. Uh, there's the lavender for the dry gin and uh, coriander for a more lemony twist and uh, green anise and sweet fennel for the absinthe that we're developing. I thought absinthe was illegal. <laughs> it was for a time, but then all alcohol is fundamentally poisonous. <laughs> if you remember anything, let us know. Mr. Rafferty. Ah, Worry. How are you? Yeah, we were so sorry and, well, surprised about Zach. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, the pay rise we discussed. I know it's not supposed to kick in for a few months, but I can really use it right now. I'll speak to Janie. I'm sure there won't be a problem. You've been such a key part of our success and, uh, well, that deserves to be rewarded. <laughs> Thanks. I'll get back to it. The post-mortem confirms death by ligature pressure. With this violin string. And the St. Christopher. Yes, but the inscription's in French. St. Christophe protégé nu. St. Christopher protects us. I'd ask for my money back. Any luck with the music? Yes. You can just see the title there. Tottenfire. Meaning? My German's a bit rusty. Celebration of death. It comes from a symphonic poem by Gustav Mahler. Sounds like someone's playing games. We also found this near the body. It's a solid form of resin obtained from plants, mainly conifers. What's it used for? It's rubbed on the bow hair to enhance grip and improve tone. It seems like an unusual brand. We need to track down where these came from. There's a music shop in Thassingham that supplies the orchestra. They might be able to help. Thanks, Cam. Uh, Jamie. Yeah. I still owe you dinner. Are you free tomorrow night? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll check my diary. It's a virtuoso. Not very popular, but we do keep some in stock. Have you sold any recently? Jacob Wheeler bought a set yesterday. And this? Oh, that's an Italian rosin. It contains particles of gold. Is that a stock item? Uh, Jacob was the only one that used it. I don't suppose you have a copy of Mahler's Totenfire? Totenfire. Uh, I'm afraid not, no. But I could order it. Have you ever been a musician, Mr Baxter? Oh, certainly not, no. No, I'm more of a craftsman. I repair and restore instruments. It must keep you very busy. Classical music is my obsession. You might have seen my vlog. Video blog, sir. Notes from Thassingham. Notes. As in musical. So you were filming at the manor before Jacob's death? That's right, yes. I'm a huge fan of Michael Faulkner. I gathered. We'll need that footage. Mm, sir. In fact, tomorrow night, I'm organising a pop-up cinema event at the manor. Horror in black and white. Please, take one. And what film are you showing? Oh, it's an early classic from the silent era. Oh, you'll remember it then, sir. Oh, it's going to be thrilling. The string section are providing the accompaniment. Without Jacob, of course. How well did you know him, Mr Baxter? Uh. Interviewed him a couple of times. 
I don't really know anyone well. Apart from Marjorie, of course. Marjorie. Cats are so much kinder than people, don't you think? The festival has to reopen today. I need to get the press on my side before I debut the ninth. My daughter could be at risk, and you're worried about bad reviews. Jamie, I've got a huge amount riding on this. My reputation is at stake. That's all you care about. You're not the one who nearly went bankrupt. You have no idea what it feels like to be in real financial trouble. Yes, well, I'm afraid I do. And for that reason, I shall have to call in the loan. What on earth are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I need that money. We agreed at the time it was a loan. You know how hard we've worked to get back on our feet. It's impossible. Then make it possible. Otherwise, there'll have to be more cuts in the orchestra. Last in, first out. And you know how much Candice wants her place. Michael. Please. Perhaps I should talk to Hamish. You wouldn't. That's just one more thing he doesn't know about you, isn't it? Ivo Baxter's just posted another vlog. The rumour mill has gone into overdrive, linking Michael Faulkner's up-and-coming Ninth Symphony with the horrific murder of Jacob Wheeler. Could this grisly death signify a return to the Curse of the Ninth? The Curse of the Ninth? That's a well-known superstition in the classical music world, apparently. Once a composer performs their Ninth Symphony, they're destined to die. And I'm guessing Gustav Mahler is one of its unfortunate victims. Mm -hmm. Hence, the music in Jacob's mouth. Let's see if Michael Faulkner can enlighten us further. Good morning, Chief Inspector. Sergeant, any news? We identified the music found in Jacob Wheeler's mouth. Mahler's Totenfire. How very sinister. We thought that you might have a copy. Yes, there should be a complete set of Marla's works here in the music library. All right, if I take a look? Yes, you're our guest. The online voting system for the award. How does it work? You join the festival members list for a small annual fee, which entitles you to vote online for your favourite musician from the video clips on the website. So, essentially, anyone can vote? I suppose so, yes. Jacob Wheeler was your lead violinist. That's right. Who's in line to replace him? Uh, Candice Rafferty, Natalie Wheeler, perhaps my son Dan will audition. Uh, this symphony is your ninth, I believe. That's quite an achievement. I think it's the best thing I've written. What about the famous curse, Mr Faulkner? It must be unsettling, especially now. Fortunately, I'm not superstitious, Chief Inspector. A bit early for you, darling. Hamish. Mm -hmm. You might as well know. He'll probably tell you anyway. Know what? I borrowed a large sum of money from Michael. You said that was part of your inheritance. Well, I lied. And now he wants it all back. But you'll have to say no, Janie. We won't survive it. If we don't find the money somehow, Candice will lose her place in the orchestra. He actually said that? Well, it is his money, Hamish. He's perfectly entitled to ask for it back. We've got no choice. <sighs> Sixteen violins. Can we all finish on the same note, please? That's an F, Natalie. Sorry, Maestro. 
I need my ninth symphony to be received as an inspired work of genius that requires exceptional playing from all of you. Natalie, bar 16, on your own, please. If that's the best you could do, leave my rehearsal. Dad, I think she deserves a little more compassion right now. If she's too grief-stricken to play, she shouldn't be here. Are you? I'm fine. I want to be here. We're all suffering. I was as fond of Jacob as anyone else. But musicians can overcome that pain in the pursuit of perfection. Not that that's something you would know about. As union rep, I move that we all refuse to play until the killer is found. Unless, that is, you think that the maestro's ninth symphony is worth dying for? <laughs> Or have you more courage, more respect than this man? I say we play on. Not for me, but for Jacob, to honor his memory. I'll take that as a yes. Shall we go from the beginning? Totem Fire is missing. It's in the library records, but it's not signed out. Who has access? The library's never locked. So why are we here? Cam found prints in Candace's locker containing particles of gold from the rosin only Jacob Wheeler used. And they also found flecks of gold in her elimination prints taken at the scene. I'm thinking that Candace took Jacob Wheeler's violin after finding his body and then put her own violin in her locker. And when she left with her father, she was carrying Jacob's violin as if it were her own. Mm -hmm. And there's more. The prints match those we found on the glass in Jacob Wheeler's room. So Candace and Jacob were more than just friends. I'm so sorry. If there was any way to keep you. This is a joke, right? I wish it was. You can't do this. Look, it's only temporary, Warwick. <laughs> I've done everything to make this happen for you, Hamish. I've done anything that was needed. And this is how you repay me. I appreciate everything you've done. Oh, give us time, we'll be back on track, I swear it. I haven't got time. Look, Warwick! Please! No, sir. Why did you lie about your relationship with Jacob? Jacob wanted to keep it quiet. I'm Michael's niece. He didn't want people to judge us. We have evidence to suggest that you stole Jacob's violin after his death. Jacob's violin was all I had left of him. I couldn't let it go. So where is it now? I don't know. It was stolen in the break-in. There you are. You're right, Dad. Yeah, I just fancied a pint. Uh, what can I get you? You weren't at work. I need to talk to you, Dad. You're gonna have to tell him. Tell me what? I've been laid off, but you mustn't worry. We'll be fine. They can't do that. That family can do whatever they like. When you think of all the work I put into that place. They used you. Don't do anything stupid, will you, Dad? Dad. Dad. See you later. It's me. I'm in. I'm definitely in.
thumb is working. Good girl. I hope we haven't interrupted your creative flow. No, actually, perfect timing. That's chapter three finished. Oh, brilliant. When can I read it? <laughs> oh, no. You're not reading it. Well, please. No. Well, but surely the whole point of writing is for other people to read it. Yes, people, not detectives. But I'm your biggest fan. I know you'll spot the murderer on page two. Well, why don't you post it on that site you're addicted to? They must have forums for writers who are testing the waters. Yeah, they do. I'm not sure I'm brave enough yet. Oh, says the woman who tried to sell my Led Zeppelin albums at a school fete. Have you got a transcript of Janie Rafferty's exchange with Jacob? Makes for interesting reading. Oh. Stay away from my daughter, and if you ever tell her about us, and then you turn away. What could Jacob have told Candice about your relationship, Mrs. Rafferty? It was a one off. Something I immediately regretted. He could be very charming, persuasive. The last thing I expected was for my daughter to fall in love with him. And your husband? Does he know any of this? No. And he has no need. Convenient for you, then, that Jacob was murdered. <laughs> Where did you disappear to last night, eh? And then you're in a fit state to notice. That brandy bottle took quite a hit. You know I can't sleep when you're snoring. I went for a walk. Right. I need to go to the shop. I'll keep you company. It's all right. Quicker on my own. Have you seen me already? I've got my phone. So, Vernon de Harthog has a criminal record. What have we got? Apart from the fact he wasn't Jacob's biggest fan. He's been sacked from previous orchestras for opportunist theft. Cash, jewellery, watches. A few suspended sentences, but nothing major. So, trying to fence a Stradivarius would be quite a leap. Well, he could do with the money, though. He's overdrawn, maxed out on all his cards. And Werner was in serious trouble. An official complaint had been made against him to the Musicians' Union. Who by? Jacob Wheeler. He was trying to get Vernon fired. Let's talk to him. Shall we take it from bar 116? No, no, late, 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 Mr. The Hearthog. That's the third time you've been unable to keep temper. Heavy night last night? Not especially. Oh, you don't even have that as an excuse. I'll try harder next time, Maestro. No, you leave. I won't have you wasting everybody's time, especially mine. I don't think you can sack me on an egotistical whim. According to union regulations... You were given a final warning. I think you'd better go. Here he comes. Daddy's little darling doing his dirty work. He says that Daddy's going to let him go for lead violin. But he won't. Because, sadly, Daddy has no respect for his ability. In fact, Daddy finds him a bit of an embarrassment. Go on. Ask him. Ask him. Get out. 
You get out now, and don't come back until you've learned some respect. What? Of course I didn't steal a bloody violin. You think I'm totally insane? Fencing something like that's well nigh impossible. You can't deny you could do with the money. I understand Jacob lodged an official complaint against you, accusing you of theft. He wanted me out. But he was always smarming around our beloved maestro. I saw right through him. I'll tell you something else, too. He certainly did not deserve to be lead violin. And who do you think does? That's anyone's guess. What are you doing with Jacob Wheeler's wallet? Get rid of it. I can explain. No more lies. What about your lies? You and Warwick. I read your texts. Are you in love with him? Don't be ridiculous. An affair I could cope with, but if you loved him, I'm not sure I could bear it. Promise me. Mr. Hartog needed the money, plus he has form. And we know both Candace and Janie lied. Jacob Wheeler was a potential threat to the Rafferty family. But if we're looking at who benefited from Jacob's death professionally, Natalie, Dan, and Candace are all in line to replace him as lead violin. Let's make sure we have a strong uniform presence at tonight's cinema event. I've already got that covered, sir. I'm taking Cam. We said dinner. I thought this would be more fun. It's certainly different. Come on, you can buy me a hot dog. I'll have a large one with onions. Excuse me? Yeah, whoa, 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 you blew your last chance, Vernon. Uh, I need to apologize to the maestro about earlier. No, you were told quite specifically that you couldn't come no. back. Maestro! Vernon. Vernon! Maestro. Maestro. I must talk to you about some urgency. The projectionist is ready. Mr. De Hartog, if you are genuinely no, sober and sorry, I will take pity on you. The Schubert is far more resonant with your viola. Oh, my viola. Um, left it in the church. What's that? Scotch mist? Take your seat or your career with me is over. For good. Right. While you're away, I, um, I did quite a lot of thinking. So did I. Did you come to any conclusions? No, but I have to soon. The guy who ran the course offered me a job. I thought you liked it here. I do, but it's a fantastic opportunity. But it's in Montreal. Canada? It'll be an adventure. Do you know how cold it gets there? Minus 50, with a wind chill colder than the surface of Mars. How about you? You said you did a lot of thinking too while I was away. <clears throat> It'll keep. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The film is about to commence.
Vernon de Harthog and Jacob Wheeler. What connects them? Both string players in Michael's ensemble, but Vernon played the viola, so obviously not competing for lead violin. And Jacob Stradivarius is still missing. And then there's the famous Curse of the Ninth. Someone could have been targeting Michael's ensemble. Let's find out if there's anything significant about the music that Vernon was playing last night. Did you notice anything unusual? There's definitely something going on between Vernon and Dan Faulkner. It looked like Vernon was trying to tell Michael something and Dan stepped in. We'll have to ask him why. Anything more on uh, Vernon's will? Mm. He's owned a seaside cottage in Brighton since the 60s, now worth a small fortune. Who's the beneficiary? Audrey Glenhill. You'd never hurt anyone. I know. It'll be OK. You just need to stay strong. I, uh... <clears throat> I bought you these, Audrey. I know I haven't always been a very good friend, but... You're not wanted here. I think you'd better go. I need to speak to Mrs Glenhill. Alone. The cottage is worth a considerable sum and left solely to you. I had no idea. Did Vernon have any enemies that you know of? Problematic relationships? Vernon was old school, so I didn't fit in with Michael's shiny new vision for the festival. Michael was trying to get rid of him. So you both have a difficult history with the Faulkner family. Janie was my best friend, or so I thought. When she got an opportunity to stab me in the back, she did it without giving it a second thought. Quite a temper you've got there. I have my final audition in an hour. Can't this wait? It means a lot to you, doesn't it? Getting lead violin. Well, not so much that I'd murder fellow musicians, if that's what you're implying. I saw you have a run in with Mr. Hartog just before he died. I was just trying to protect my father. His Ninth Symphony is obviously important. Well, there's a lot at stake. Vernon de Hartog was a liability. And no fan of yours. Apparently, he humiliated you, belittled your talent said that you'd never make Lee Violin. Yeah, maybe I hated him in that moment because that's what I've believed all my life. But it was just that, a moment. Will you excuse me? Vernon could be a complete nightmare. We understand that he tried to speak to you before the concert. Yes, that's right. Have you any idea what he wanted to say? No, he was keen to talk about something, but uh, the film was about to start. What piece was Vernon playing when he died, Mr. Faulkner? Schubert. Why, is that important? Schubert is another composer associated with the Curse of the Ninth. Which is why I'd advise you to postpone tomorrow's concert. Look, I'm not afraid of any curse. No, 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 we go ahead, as planned. Sorry about last night. Not quite what I had planned. Work seems to have a habit of getting in the way. What have you got for us, Cam? Uh, the PM results confirm death through asphyxia. Any idea why? Strychnine poisoning. When inhaled, swallowed or absorbed through the eyes or mouth, it induces muscular convulsions and ultimately respiratory failure. But how? We found evidence of a highly toxic concentration of strychnine on the strings and bow. He would have inhaled the poison as soon as he started playing. Is it hard to get hold of? Well, commercially produced strychnine isn't readily available in this concentrated form. I'd suggest it was freshly ground from the seeds of a strychnos ignitae shrub. It's from the Philippines, uh, originally. The, um... Fruit, known as the Saint Ignatius bean, contains as many as 25 seeds embedded in its pulp. I dry them and grind the seeds myself. And why would you do that? Uh, 
Well, um, you might as well know the truth. It's not strictly legal. We have a problem with moles uh, at the distillery and the manor. They become immune to the approved uh, pest control solutions. How is it stored? Right, just through here. Uh, oh. Seems to be missing. When was the last time you checked? Uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Is it locked when you're not here? D always. Who had keys? Well, me, of course. Warwick used to, but he... Yes, he gave them back. Uh, we've got a spare set in the kitchen. So it could have been taken in the break-in? Well, it's possible, yes, but... Well, none of our keys are missing. Call Cam. She needs to get over here. See if Hamish's homemade mole destroyer matches the poison that killed Vernon. Will do. I've just got Vernon's phone records through. Looks like he sent an interesting text to Warwick the day he died. I'm on to you. Well done, Dan. I can see you've worked very hard. Thank you. But uh, I've made my decision. Natalie Wheeler will be lead violin. It wasn't an easy decision. She's just more suited to the emotional range of the work. You were never going to give it to me, were you? Vernon was right. Dan, Vernon. You know what people are saying? That Michael Falconer's genius is fading. Are they? Well, at least I was touched by it once or twice. Most people never even get close. You know, I've supported you. I've protected you. I've defended you. What have you ever done for me but try to make me feel inadequate? Not quite good enough to be your son. Well, congratulations. You've done an excellent job. Dan. You're not the only one who's disappointed. I wanted it just as much as you. I don't think so. Maybe we just have to accept that Natalie is the better player. I'm on to you. What do you think you meant by that? Werner was all over the place when he'd had a few. Started imagining things. Thought me and Audrey were having an affair. And are you? No. We're just mates. I help out a bit, that's all. And you didn't know that she would inherit a property from Mr. De Hartog? Quite a valuable one. No. Yes, Winter. You must have been disappointed to lose your job, Mr. Sawande. I'll find something else. Now, if you'll excuse me. Thanks. Sir, so Uniform have found something in Vernon's car. A key card to a safety deposit box registered to an Anton Bruckner. Like the composer. Who died in 1896. After his Ninth Symphony? Mm-hmm. The curse strikes again. I know it was hard for Dad when Mum died. He didn't know what to do with me. I finally thought we were getting somewhere. That I was worthy of being his son. It seems I'm not. Of course you are. You don't know that. I never thought I'd see you indoctrinating your daughter into the dark arts of housework. Yeah, well, it's a distraction technique. I've just posted my first few chapters on a writer's forum. I'm waiting for the response now. I am so impressed. Well, let's see what they say first. So, the boys missed you terribly, especially Jamie. Really? You heard I've been offered a job in Montreal. No! How exciting! Well, maybe it isn't. Well, I haven't accepted yet. 
One moment I'm living the expat dream in an exciting new city, and the next it seems completely bonkers. And Jamie? I know he likes me, but we just keep missing our moments somehow. I think most of us regret the times that we weren't brave enough to take a risk. Not the times we were. So you think I should take it? I wasn't talking about the job, Cam. Any news on the strychnine? The sample from the greenhouse is a perfect match. So at least we've identified the source. Also, I spoke to an employee at the safety deposit company. Turns out his description of Anton Bruckner matches Jacob Wheeler. Any information on what he was storing there? The box was empty. They only keep CCTV footage for 28 days, so there was no sighting of Jacob. But I did manage to get hold of this. Looks like a passport. That's what I thought, but what did Vernon do with it? Why would Jacob keep his passport in a safety deposit box? And see some spag ball. I thought we could sit down together for once. Uh, another time, yeah? <laughs> Come on. I'll let you beat me at FIFA. Sorry, Dan, I'm going out. Again? Where you go? So when were you going to tell me about Amsterdam? I wanted to tell you, but I just couldn't bring myself. Are you mixed up in any of this? If you are, tell me now. No, it's not that. I have gone behind your back. I'm in a band. You're in a band? I've been for a while. So you're going to throw it all away? Everything we've worked for? for some fantasy about being a rock star. We're good, Dad. Been booked for a tour. You have no idea what I've done for you. Just gonna look into your eye. Lovely. All the stills were turned up to the max. Any longer and the whole place would have gone up. OK, thanks. Miss Wheeler. Are you OK? A bit shaken and light-headed, but apart from that... You're very lucky Miss Rafferty found you when she did. 
Was someone trying to kill me? We don't know that yet. Did you see anyone or hear anything unusual before you lost consciousness? No, not that I can remember. You and Jacob had matching St. Christopher's. Our grandmother was French, devout, Catholic. She gave them to us when we were born. Are they valuable? I think so. It's white gold. But it's more sentimental value. They were to keep us safe. She must be looking down on you today. She's another violinist. Fits the profile. But this feels different. No music, nothing linking it to the curse. How is she, Inspector? A, a little disorientated, but the medics say there's no cause for concern. Oh, that's such a relief. She was very lucky Candice was there. Uh, yes, yes. Thank God. And where were you at the time? Uh, Millminster. Leisure centre. He swims every week. <laughs> and you, Mrs Rafferty? I was with Michael at the manor. Can we speak to Candice? She's in the house. Uh, but please go carefully with her. After what happened with Jacob, uh, she's taken this very hard. You talk to Candace while I try and get hold of Cam. I'd like her to take another look at Jacob's pendant. You sent Natalie a text asking her to meet you at the distillery. Was that unusual? We hadn't been very close recently. She used to come up here sometimes. I wanted to talk to her. About anything in particular? After Jacob's death. And it all came out about me and him. She kept her distance. I think she was angry we'd kept it all a secret. Why were you late? I had to pick up my violin from the music shop, but it wasn't ready. Why are you asking me all these questions? All I wanted to do was make things right. Well, she seems genuine enough, but she does have means. And whoever did this would have to be familiar with how the distillery worked. Warwick claims he accepted his dismissal. Do you think that was all for our benefit? Perhaps. Let's speak to Audrey Glenhill. We know she has a grudge against the Rafferty's, and she may be able to enlighten us on why Vernon had that key card. I was nowhere near the distillery. You felt you'd lost everything because of Janie and you wanted your own back. Do you honestly think I'd have the technical know-how to pull off a stunt like that? Your friend Warwick Sawande would. Well, it's a nice theory, but you're wrong. Maybe you recognise this. It's for a safety deposit box belonging to Jacob Wheeler. The night Vernon died, he was seen there removing a passport. Do you know anything about this? No, I don't. I don't know anything, and that's the truth. Mrs Glenhill, if you're withholding anything that could help this investigation, you will be in serious trouble. Look... I don't know what Vernon was up to, but I found Jacob's wallet in his coat pocket. I didn't know what to think. I just told him to get rid of it. And that was the last time I saw him. You sure you're well enough to play? I'm fine now. Honestly. I pushed you away because I was angry. Not with you. With him. Thanks very much. Any luck with the passport? Tech can confirm it's a UK passport, but nothing else so far. However, we have had a result on the Rafferty's finance check. A large sum of money was transferred from the Rafferty's business account into Michael Faulkner's personal account two days after Jacob Wheeler was murdered. And there's more. You have been busy. Mm. Janie and Candace's alibis check out. However, Hamish wasn't swimming today. You have to swipe in and there's no data recording his visit. Time we had another word with Mr Rafferty. He wasn't in his right mind. You can see that. No, 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 no. 
I'll, I'll take full responsibility. Why did you do it, Mr. Rafferty? We were dairy farmers. Happy, prosperous enough. Then the bottom fell out of the market. We only just managed to hold on to the house. I borrowed money from Michael to start the new business. Hamish didn't know. He thought I'd inherited it from a distant relative. Then Michael called in the loan. And we had no choice but to pay it back. Oldest trick in the book. Staging an accident and then claiming on the insurance. But it seemed like a good idea at the time. It's called fraud, Mr. Rafferty. And the woman nearly died. And I'll never forgive myself for that. I thought the distillery was empty. I couldn't even get that right. Look after the girl for me. Cam wants to see us. Are you right to have this analysed? It's an alloy, approximately two, three years old. Natalie's pendant had more lustre. Yes, real gold doesn't react with oxygen. Therefore, it can never fade, tarnish or rust with time. Jacob's pendant was a pretty good imitation. And there's something else. Red birthmarks are skin markings close to the surface of the skin, created by blood vessels. But when I took a sample of this one, it tested positive for manufactured dye. It's a tattoo. Any idea how long it's been there? From the minimal evidence of fading, I'd say two years, Max. So this isn't Jacob Wheeler? We've got an imposter on our hands. But who is he? Where is the real Jacob Wheeler? I've got a DNA match on the victim we knew as Jacob, Leon Hunt. 27 years old, last known address is a flat in South Manchester. In 2008, he served eight months for hacking his ex-girlfriend's computer. He used her personal details to get into a bank account. Good work. It seems likely that the passport in the safety deposit box belonged to Leon Hunt. But what did he stand to gain from impersonating Jacob Wheeler? Family inheritance. We found this in the Finchmere Parish newsletter about the parents' fatal car crash in 2012. It says here that the parents' death left the daughter alone after younger son ran away from home at 14. I wonder why Natalie didn't mention that. Perhaps to protect her brother. Maybe it doesn't tally with the way she wants him to be remembered. Let's see what she has to say. Um, Jamie, hmm. I wanted you to be the first to know. I said yes to the job in Montreal. Oh. Right. Great. Well, if, if that's what you want, then, um, then I'm really happy for you. Thanks. It should be exciting. When do you leave? Uh, end of the week. Wow. I appreciate this is hard, Miss Wheeler, but... Um... Could you tell us what happened on the day that Jacob disappeared? He was at summer camp. Dan was there too. Jacob had some big argument with the camp leader and ran off. Did anyone contact the police? They weren't very interested. Why was that? He'd run away so many times before. It started when we moved from London to Finchmere. Jacob found it hard to adjust, missed his friends, started bunking off. He was only interested in his music. Police said, given his history, that he probably didn't want to be found. 
that he'd come back when he was ready. And you have no idea where he went? No. He sent some texts. Once, twice a year, maybe. Just wanted me to know he was okay. After a while, they stopped. Then we'll need to take a look at those texts. So, how did he, um, reappear? I was playing in Dublin a couple of years ago. He was in another orchestra. And then, suddenly, there he was. And did you never doubt that it was your brother? No, it had to be him. He had the same birthmark. His St. Christopher. And he knew so much about the family, things that only Jacob could know. Leon Hunt was a highly skilled computer hacker. We suspect that he hacked yours. No doubt there's all kinds of information about you and Jacob on there. But he did a DNA test. The lawyers made him for my parents' inheritance. Yeah, well, with his expertise, it wouldn't be very difficult to fake. If this is all true, Jacob's still missing. You've got to help me find him. I think you need a minute just to take it all in. Uh, Mr Faulkner, what can you tell us about this uh, summer camp? Um, all the local villagers took part. It's where I met Jacob. When was the last time you saw him? It was on the Sunday when he ran away, and getting on the bus to Milminster. Do you remember what time this was? Uh, must have been late afternoon, about six. And do you know what it was that he was arguing about with the camp leader before he left? Uh, um, Jacob had nicked Audrey's cigarettes. We thought it was really funny. Even Ivo Baxter, but... She caught him, handing them round. She went crazy, they had this big argument, and then he just... walked. Audrey? Yeah, the camp leader. Audrey Glenhill. She runs the Tassingham Arms. Been. I had to make sure I wasn't following. Come on, let's get this done and get out of here. Should be open by now. She's not picking up any calls. Let's triangulate her phone, see if we can track her down. Sir. In the meantime, let's see what Ivo Baxter has to say about the last time he saw the real Jacob Wheeler. Hello? Mr Baxter? Marjorie was in here. Didn't mean to startle you, Mr. Baxter. We just wanted to ask a few questions. Oh, um, well, should we go up to the shop? It's much warmer there. Well, here's fine. You've got some lovely instruments, Mr. Baxter. Nothing of note, <laughs> if you excuse the pun. I doubt that very much. I'm rather curious about this uh, stain. Oh, uh, did you know that violinists used to use it to cover the grey in their hair? Must have made a terrible mess. <laughs> Surely a stain like this could also be used to uh, darken the distinctive red colour of a Stradivarius, if you wanted to disguise it. May I take a look at that case, Mr Baxter? see it as an act of stealing, more of an act of mercy. Jacob didn't deserve to play such a rare and beautiful instrument. He could never have loved it as I would have loved it. So when he was murdered, I knew I had to rescue it. When did you last see Jacob before he ran away? Uh, at youth camp, he was smoking, offered me one. I didn't take it. Sir? Any idea what might be on this, Mr. Baxter? I've never seen it before in my life. From Ivo's reaction, I reckon he could be telling the truth. I'm reserving judgment until we know what's on that memory stick. Tech could take some time. The files are encrypted. Hold on, sir. Triangulation puts Audrey's phone somewhere here. 
Let's see what she remembers about the day Jacob ran away. Uh-huh. That's it. Told you it'd be all right. OK. Mr Sawande, would you mind opening those doors for me? It was my idea. Warwick had lost his job. He needed the money. The Rafferty's were to blame. Felt like divine justice. So we just helped ourselves. Found a dealer who'd take it. You were uh, a youth leader here, I understand. Yeah, that's right. That's how I knew about the hut. No one uses it anymore, so that's the perfect hiding place. You were in charge on the day that Jacob Wheeler ran away. Dan Faulkner said that Jacob was in trouble for stealing cigarettes. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Boys were always smoking down in the tunnels. The tunnels? Yeah. It's a rabbit warren under here. Dangerous. <coughs> we couldn't keep a check on them. Even when they bricked up all the entrances, they'd always find a new way in there. That's why we moved the camp to Badger's Drift. Stay there. Dan Falconer said he last saw Jacob getting on the bus to Millminster at around 6pm that Sunday. That's right. You sure about that? I could be wrong, but there was never normally a bus after 3pm on a Sunday. <laughs> Sir! You should take a look at this. Seems to go on for some distance, sir. Well, Cam, I think we need an excavation team. We need to have another talk with Dan Faulkner. His story about Jacob Wheeler doesn't tie up with the others. You might want to speak to his father, Michael, first. Tech have just sent me through the files from the memory stick. They'll both be at the concert by now. You must play without fear. Play from the depth of your soul. And together, we will fly in the face of the curse. Thank you. But, Dan... Mr. Faulkner. Chief Inspector. Dan told me about Jacob being an imposter. Extraordinary. But, um, I'm afraid I don't have time for that now. I think you do. Excuse me. Yes. We found the Stradivarius in Ivo Bax's workshop. There was a USB stick in one of the compartments. On it were confidential medical notes relating to the radical treatment you're about to undergo to save your hearing. Why would the man you knew as Jacob Wheeler have that information in an encrypted file? Because he was trying to blackmail me. He found out I was going deaf. He said my career would be over if the truth came out. Hence the need to call in the loan to your sister to pay for your treatment and for Jacob's blackmail. No, I refused to pay. When I tried to fire him, he threatened to go to the press. And then he rigged the voting system to make sure that he won the award money, and I felt that I couldn't say anything. You could have said no. Chief Inspector, I don't think you know how precarious our festival here is. Music has been my entire life. Without it, I'm not sure I'd want to carry on. Where is your son? He's on stage, I hope. I've decided to make him lead violin.
Barnaby. Thanks, Ken. We're on our way. The tunnels lead to a number of chambers, and we found this. Here. It's male, between 13 and 15 years old. It's been here some considerable time. It's Jacob. It doesn't matter anymore. What do you mean? But Dan, what are you doing? Stop, stop it! Trust me. Dan, why are you doing this? If you got what you wanted, you should be happy. I need you to hear it from me first. I need you to understand. Understand what? Jacob never left the camp, did he, Mr. Faulkner? You told us he got on a bus to Millminster, but we know there was no service after 3 p.m. Why would you lie if it wasn't to conceal the fact that he never left at all? No, I saw him go. I'm very sorry, Miss Wheeler, but we found what we believe to be your brother's remains in the tunnels near to the youth camp. No, you can't have. What really happened on that day? Jacob... dared me to steal Audrey's cigarettes. But I bottled it. So he did it. Easy. He laughed at my face. I just wanted to get him back. So, um, when we went down to the tunnels, I confronted him, told him what I thought. We argued. He grabbed me, so I, I pushed him. And I heard a thud. And then nothing. I didn't know what to do. Why didn't you help him? Because I was a coward. He's been there all this time, and you knew. I'm sorry. But the text from Jacob, he said he was OK. I just wanted you to feel better. You? How could you lie to me about that? But, Miss Wheeler, you have a lie of your own, don't you? On the day that Leon died, you called your solicitor and told him not to release your brother's inheritance. You already knew that he was an imposter. I had no idea, I've told you. We've unearthed a recording of you at the Dublin Symphony Hall from the evening when you were reunited with your supposed brother. Do you remember what you were playing? 
Of course you do. Totem fire. Celebration of death. I wanted to believe it was him. My Jacob. He seemed different somehow. But it had been such a long time. Then I found a flight booking in his real name. On a phone I'd never seen before. I confronted him the first night of the festival. He was planning to leave once he'd got the inheritance money. Jacob's money. I told him I was going to the police. It was so horrid. He said how easy it was. How stupid I'd been. And that he'd kill me if I told anyone. I believed him. So you strangled him? He deserved it. And then there was Vernon de Harthock. We know that he found Leon's passport. He came to see me, told me everything he'd discovered. Thrilled by the drama of it all. And you were afraid that Vernon's revelation would lead us straight to you. So you moved quickly to keep him quiet. Your friendship with Candace Rafferty gave you access to the strychnine. Poor Vernon. I'd waited so long for Jacob to come home. Natalie, I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. No, I don't. <laughs> it's time to go, Miss Wheeler. Can you take me to see my brother? Please. I shouldn't, but I can't help feeling sorry for her. Life's all about the decisions we make, good or bad. I think you're making the right one, by the way. Happy to get rid of me, then. <laughs> Quite the opposite. You've done amazing work here. It'll be hard to replace. We're all going to miss you. Aren't we, Winter? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Stay away from the bears. I'll remember that. Da -da -da. For you, Bessie. <laughs> that was lovely, Jamie. That's so sweet of you. You won't be saying that when she's playing it at six o'clock in the morning. And for you, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I hear you have a publisher interested. Can I read it? Oh, no chance. She won't even let me. I'm too clever, apparently. And modest. Oh. It's Cam. She's landed. Oh, I hope she has a great time. Yeah, they're very lucky to have her. Well done, Betty. She's a natural. So, will I still be invited over to lunch when you're uh, rich and famous? You're welcome here any time, Jamie. 
With your bestseller and Betty's musical prowess, looks like I'll be taking early retirement. Oh, don't do that. I'm only just getting used to your funny ways. <laughs>